two headphones with the exact same price tag of 379 and I need to pick one as my new daily headphones. Right now, I can't decide, so let's put them to the test. Now, both headphones are decent upgrades from their predecessors and bring about some welcome changes. The PX7 S2s deliver a new design with stylish comfort in mind, improved ANC, revised internals, a new driver design for enhanced sound performance and better app compatibility. The Sony XM5s bring a pretty big shift in design from previous editions, upgrades to ANC, improved call quality, a slight upgrade in battery life, and a step up in sound performance. But we do sadly say goodbye to foldable ear cups. Now with them both in my hands, they clearly offer different aesthetics. So Bowers have slapped their logo nice and visible on the ear cups, whereas Sony have gone for a more discreet look here on the arm. Now the headbands are also a pretty big differentiator, much thinner here on the Sony, so it will be interesting to see how that affects the comfort. I think the PX7 S2s feel more stylish and they do feel more premium with the overall combination of materials used. So they've replaced the carbon fiber arms of the previous generation with a matte plastic composite that oddly feels more premium and also helps make these headphones feel a bit lighter. We've then got a moisture resistant fabric around this headband, good for any sweaty heads out there, uh, and aluminium highlights here with the gold and then memory foam ear cups. Now the XM5s are a plastic design and actually use recycled plastic materials within there too, but it's finished in soft fit vegan leather, which I have to say is really nice to the touch uh, and a design that I really like myself. Now you've also got memory foam in this headband and in the ear cups too. Another big difference is that the XM5s offer a combination of buttons and touch controls, while the PX7 S2 use buttons only. Which you like best will be personal preference. For me, I like the touch so long as it is intuitive and it is with the XM5s. Now both headphones also come with a case, which is important considering they can't be folded, so the case keeps them nice and safe. Now there's not much difference in terms of size here with these, but again, the PX7 S2 case does feel a bit more premium with the materials and overall design. Now on the whole, the PX7 S2s do feel like the more luxurious option in terms of design and overall aesthetic for me. So first point goes to the uh, PX7s. In terms of comfort, let's start off with weight. Now, as I said, the PX7 S2s are a bit heavier, weighing in at 310 grams compared with 250 grams for the XM5s, so around 23% heavier. Now, we do also need to consider the clamping force too, and while Bowers have worked on the clamping force of the PX7 S2s, and Bowers have said the force will loosen over time, the Sony still have the edge there and are more comfortable for me when worn over longer periods of time. Now, if you set them down, you can actually see where they naturally sit. And the XM5s just have a bit more breathing room. Um, now, I will come back to how this all affects sound isolation in a bit. Now, I have found that my ears can get a bit warmer in the XM5s than the PX7 S2s, and I think that's down to the depth within the ear cups, thanks to the angled drivers in the PX7s. But even after a long three to four hour listening session, I didn't have sweaty ears with those. Now the memory foam and material used on the ear cups on the XM5s also feels a bit softer. And you can see here when I do the push test on the memory foam, it does take a little bit longer for the XM5 to get back into shape. And on the whole, I have to say the XM5s are my pick in terms of comfort. I would say that these are some of the comfiest headphones available, and I personally love how these feel and fit. The Bose 700s are also up there, but for me, the Sonys still take the win this time, so a point to the Sonys, uh, and I guess you could say it is even so far. Both of these headphones offer a really, really decent sound performance. The PX7 S2s, they boast two, 40 millimeter dynamic biocellulose drivers, there's your first bit of jargon, which essentially means they should offer a more refined audio performance. While the XM5s have 30 millimeter drivers, so a slight drop down there. The PX7 S2 drivers are also angled to direct sound directly into your ear for a more natural sound stage. I do think the Sony sound great. Now I am a fan of the Sony sound signature and I had a pair of the XM3s, which I really, really loved. But I have to give it to Bowers and Wilkins, the PX7 do have the slight edge for sound performance. The bass is just slightly tighter and the mids offer more detail. 
I also think that the more snug fit also helps with the immersion on the PX7s, though the XM5s are still good at blocking out surrounding noise. I've played around with the EQ settings on the XM5s, which are great, but I still haven't managed to get them to offer the same overall performance of the PX7s, though it has been a close call and a lot of listening sessions with a variety of genres to make my overall verdict. The point still goes to the PX7s just, but let's give you guys a flavour now to see what you think. I guess I'm living in Sony claim that these offer industry-leading noise cancellation, and to be honest, I don't think they're far off. So we've got multi-noise sensor tech in the XM5s, which means there are four mics on each ear cup, which is a nice step up from four in total before, and that's combined with a new integrated processor V1 taken from the XM4 earbuds. Sony have also upgraded their NC optimizer to automatically optimize the noise cancellation as you're on the move uh, to work best in different locations. You do have some control over the noise cancellation in the app, but you can also switch between noise cancelling mode and ambient mode with the button here on the left ear cup. The PX7 S2s in comparison also offer four mics for ANC and also adjust the noise cancellation automatically to suit your surroundings. Now in terms of modes on the PX7 S2s, you've got noise cancellation on, pass through or noise cancellation off, and these can be cycled through. Now both headphones offer a good standard of noise cancellation and the PX7 S2s are definitely a big step up from the last model, but from our testing the Sony perform better in noisier environments and in particular when you're in an outside setting, so I think it's a point for the Sonys there. But you guys are the judge, so let's give you guys a quick test using our Binaura mic now. For me, cool quality is also really important on a pair of headphones. Now, the XM5s are a nice step up from previous generations and use a combination of four beam-forming microphones, Sony's voice pickup technology, wind noise reduction, and AI-powered noise reduction. On the whole, no complaints with the cool quality. We've done quite a bit of testing in different environments and it performed really well. The PX7 S2 are a very similar story and they've repositioned the two microphones for improved call quality. If you're sat at a desk and using these in an office, for example, then I think the BMW perform really well and for me are better than the XM5s and actually anything else we've tested on the channel, I think. However, when you're outside or in a noisier environment, that Sony tech once again gives these the edge. So. It's another close call, but my point does have to go to the Sonys. Now we have got some other specs to compare as well. First of all, Bluetooth. So we've got Bluetooth 5.2 on both of these headphones, which was the latest codec available at the time of launch. Both also support AAC and SBC, but only the Sonys support LDAC, and only the PX7 S2s support Aptex Adaptive, Aptex HD, and Aptex. Now, this will either matter to you or it won't, but just letting you know anyway. 
Also, the XM5s come with a USB to USB-C charging cable as well as a standard headphone cable, while the PX7S2s come with a USB-C to 3.5mm stereo jack cable and a USB-C to USB-C cable. This means you're able to connect up to your desktop or laptop and it works really well. Because this is probably the least important section and there's not really any distinguishing features between them in this section, I am going to leave it on a tie. In terms of battery life, you're looking at around 30 hours of battery with noise cancellation on for the PX7 S2s with a two hour recharge time and also a nice quick charge feature where 15 minutes gives you an additional seven hours of battery. The XM5s also come with a 30 hour battery life with noise cancellation on or 40 hours with it off. And then it's a slightly longer charge time of three and a half hours and a quick charge feature where just three minutes of charge gives you three hours of battery. But for the quick charge, you will need to purchase a USB PD compatible AC adapter. Of course, those stats can be heavily impacted by things like taking calls, volume, and of course, noise cancellation. On the whole, there's not a lot in it. Uh, I don't think there's enough to sway me either way. And I love that they both have a quick charge option. So again, it's a tie this round. Headphones these days are getting more feature rich and there's a lot of jargon thrown around. Now on the surface, the XM5s are more feature rich, but I do think you can get carried away with features that don't really get used on a daily basis. So you can obviously look at both product pages for everything they offer, but for me, these are the features that I found genuinely useful on both devices. The touch control on the XM5 is a feature that I used a lot, though I will admit that physical buttons are preferable when you're outside in a variety of conditions. A feature I used a lot on the XM5s is when you place your whole hand over the right ear cup, it activates pass-through mode, which does a great job of amplifying the outside world. They also have a speak to chat feature, which pauses the music when you talk. But for me, this was a bit intermittent and randomly switched on and off uh, when I heard a loud noise, for example. So personally, I've turned this feature off. Now both have EQ control, but the Sony have far more customizable EQ options. You've got more options in the app and just more possibility for personalization. Both have a customizable button or presets to personalize the headphones for your use, which I did really like. The XM5s have ear shape analyzer, which is part of the 360 degree setup. And for me, I can't actively tell if this has made a huge improvement. And while I like the idea behind it, I'm not sure if this is just another example of a feature which is more for show than practice. Now that the PX7 S2s are part of the B&W app, we believe that there is a chance we'll be able to play high res audio from the app and also share that audio to other B&W products such as the Panorama 3 and possibly share the audio from a TV to these headphones. Now this hasn't been confirmed, but I can see how this would work down the line and it speaks a lot about what B&W are looking to achieve. So feature wise, I think they both offered things I liked using and found handy day to day. And I can't really say which has the edge there. For me, when you factor everything in, the decision really is a hard one and I wouldn't be disappointed with either. But a choice has to be made. I sadly can't afford to keep both. So on one hand, these PX7s are the best option purely for sound quality and a premium build. The XM5s are the best option for comfort and noise cancellation. So I guess it's decision time. So will I get PX7 S2 FOMO? Probably yes, but for me, it's the XM5s. Do you think I made the right choice? Let me know down in the comments.